Hey everyone, uh, welcome to video number four of our World Explorers uh, map. And uh, we're going to be uh, continuing on along, uh, adding to what we've done already. We've done the continents and we've done the oceans. And now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the um, physical geography that these explorers had to encounter when they went on some of these big expeditions. And, uh, um, you know, a lot of the what fueled the um, exploration was trade and um, uh, the relations between the Europe and Asia. And um, uh, one of the very early um, explorers was Marco Polo, and a lot of his um, early work uh, really spurred on future explorations. And uh, maybe we'll just look at Europe, the continent of Europe and the continent of Asia and look at some of the routes taken by um, Polo and also some of those physical features that were, you know, uh, a big part of the travels that had to be done. So uh, let's look at our map and uh, you can see, before we start too much discussion on, on, on the map, let's look at our map key. Um, we have a few symbols in the map key and uh, I would suggest maybe a green and uh, maybe a brown or, or red for the, for the mountains. But let's, uh, let's add a little color to that for a symbol of map key, mountains in the map key. Let's do a, I'm going to make it a, a different, show how it can be different colors. Maybe a little on orange even. Okay. Red, did I do red? Yeah, no. All right. Red, brown, green. Let's do another one. Brown here. Okay, so that's our mountains symbol. Um, deserts. Oh, we can, we'll be getting into deserts in a little bit too. Maybe we could do a little bit of a combination um, of, of those. Well, we'll get we'll get to those. I just want to give you the first one. I also want to talk, jump down to the explorer's routes because maybe what we'll do is um, you can always assign a color to the, the various routes. Now, um, I think that we can um, probably surmise that your teacher is probably going to be having you work on maybe assigning you uh, some research on maybe one of the explorers and uh, you'll be really getting into some of the uh, history of, uh, of that explorer. Maybe um, different people in the class will do different explorers or maybe a teacher will uh, just discuss an overview of the explorers. But you know, you can, you could spend, you could spend, um, we could have, to, <laughs> we'd have to do maybe 50 videos to to um, get into all the details of, of the, we have a book here in the office called World Explorers and Discovers, and it's just chock full of um, explorers throughout history. And uh, you could spend hours talking about just Marco Polo. Um, and Marco Polo uh, is probably the first one we'll talk about right now um, because Marco Polo really opened up a lot of the um, exploration between Europe and Asia. And I think it'd be fun just to kind of, just to put a little bit of color on the general route that Marco Polo and some of his uh, relatives, two uncles took when they traveled from Italy over to what's present day China. And um, I'm gonna just start here, just to get us started. Let's use this as kind of a starting off point. Okay, I think I'll follow this little dashed line right here, and it's I'm gonna it's gonna go north up to the Black Sea. Okay, and from here we're gonna cross over. What's the now the, the Middle East? It, it, uh, it's from Iraq, Iran, some countries that are present day countries of Iraq and Iran. Um, and then they continued along through Asia. 
can see. You know, if you look at that that little uh, symbol there, that's the desert symbol. They had to cross over the um, this desert. A desert is um, it's interesting because sometimes when you think of a desert, you think it's a hot area, but really the definition of a desert is um, it receives less than 10 inches of precipitation or rain um, in a year. So it, the one thing, it, it's really a dry area, not always hot. In fact, these two deserts are cold deserts. We'll be labeling them shortly, but um, we won't do that right now. Okay, now when uh, Polo, Marco Polo got over to China, or Cathay they called it back then, I just put, um, he traveled extensively through that country, so I'm ju I just, I'm just showing the, how he traveled around in that whole region. Okay, then after spending many, many years, I think it was like 25 years maybe over in that area before returning home uh, to Italy. You know, they kind of went by a water route going back. And you can see the path kind of goes to by a water route by ship. Okay, so you can bring your, if you want to just trace it very carefully back this point here and I think it probably they probably went along the path that they went out on returning this direction and it looks like from what I could gather they went this way on the way back home looks like they went through the Mediterranean at this point by ship and made their way back to Italy. <laughs> now, I won't get into all the details of that journey. It was amazing. It's a fantastic story. Um, but that's something that um, you can you can do a little bit as you get into uh, more of the history if you end up hit, uh, researching Marco Polo. Um, but let's look at our map and just looking at that key again. We've got some mountains. Now, there is a big mountain range that actually separates Europe from Asia. And I think I'll start by adding a little color to that mountain range. Let's see, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit, use some different colors. Now, I don't know if you, if you know what mountain range this is, but it, uh, it's kind of a natural boundary between the two continents. And uh, I'm sure there's a, a more detailed line nowadays of water line, but boundary line, but um, this is kind of a general demarcation of the two continents. And uh, if we look over in our list of mountains, you can see we've got a, a list of several mountains. The mountain range that we just highlighted is called the Ural Mountains. Okay, and um, we can take our regular pencil and maybe we could just write it like right about here. U R A. L. You can abbreviate mountains if you'd like. MTS. Make sure you capitalize that first letter. Ural and mountains. All right, so there's our first physical feature, the Ural Mountains. And uh, if we wanted to um, show a little bit of the coastline too while we're at it, that's kind of a something that we're going to be doing throughout the map. Let's start with a very um, easy area. We'll just go al along. Now this is the method that I like to use to show water. I'm not going to color the whole ocean areas. Now roughly almost 75 percent of the earth is covered in water. So you don't want your map to be all colored blue. You want to just use that um, 
little edging to indicate where the water meets the land. And that's called the coastline. Okay, so I'm going to be, I'm just going to be kind of showing that coast, the water, the ocean by highlighting the coastline. So let's practice that. Let's just choose a little area of coastline um, along the Arctic here. Now, sometimes you, you run quick, quite close to some islands. Okay, we can, we can uh, add a little color to those around the coast of those little islands right there. Up there. All right, and you can see uh, that coastline is not always perfectly smooth. It's got a lot of inlets and bays extending into the land, so you have to be careful. Make sure you've got a you know, a pretty good point on that pencil. You don't want to be crossing into the land areas. You want to kind of stay on the water side. Here's a little narrow inlet here. Okay. All right, now, if you look at the, um, let's go back in, uh, I believe I labeled the, um, the uh, well, we actually, I believe that's the Caspian and that's the Black Sea there. So maybe we could actually label those. This is the Black Sea. I don't think this is in my list over here. So this is just something extra I'm adding right now. You won't have to, if you add this to your map, you won't have to, Check it off, it's not in the list. And this is the Caspian. See, I don't believe that's in our list either. Caspian, C A S P I A N. See, and uh, got a little bit of blue to those. Black Sea enters into the Mediterranean. We might label that too. I don't even, I don't think I had that in my list either, but I'll, let's just uh, add a little color to, this is where part of Polo's um, route took him into the Black Sea. I wish we had time to really talk a, a lot about what Polo, um, all of the adventures that took place. And uh, we know a lot of, well, we know quite a bit of what happened with Polo because when he got back to Italy after all his travels, um, he was actually thrown into prison um, by some leaders in Northern Italy and uh, um, he met a writer while he was in prison, and they collaborated on a book. I think it was called Il Million, something like that. And it's, it, was, it chronicalized the whole, all of his journeys. And it was, it's, a, it's a very, um, it became a you know, bestseller back then. It was, it was written in many different languages. And um, you know, there was a, it was a whole, whole um, account of that huge trip. And you know, he saw, in fact, uh, Marco Polo was said to have said that the book only told about half of what he saw. So, um, you know, we're going to stick to the physical features of different things that, you know, he had to encounter along that, along that uh, major trip that was taken. But um, we've added a little bit today. We've added some of the mountains and some of the water bodies, and we'll continue along in the next video. We'll do some, we'll do some more deserts and um, maybe. Maybe then we'll get into some other uh, continents as well. All right. Well, that's good for today. Thank you.